Hello VC, uh, coming back at you again with another video update. Um, it is the, my third video update in approximately uh, just over a week, but uh, again, I've got I've picked up a load of um, of new stuff since my last video, which I think was just a little bit over a week ago, but. Um, um, I've got some VC, uh, VCLT from Ben, Ben Costello to show you. Um, I've got some great charity shop pickups uh, to show you, um, just to show that you can find uh, good stuff in charity shops, uh, including this charity shop find, this um, Pink Floyd t-shirt, um, I think it's Japanese or at least it's Asian, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, um, uh, also I just like to point out, um, I this week I picked up my hundredth subscription, so I now have 100 subscribers and reached that um, that crucial mark. Um, Black Celebration is the the hundredth uh, subscriber, um, so. I don't want to make too long now, so let's get cracking. I met Ben Costello on Saturday, um, so we um, uh, went um, looking around town. Uh, didn't pick up any records, but he very kindly uh, gave me something which he promised, which he told me about long, uh, quite a while back, um, some VCLT. You picked up for me. Um, now the first, now that these two items are just, um, they're just mind blowing. Um, this is uh, David Bowie is inside, and this is a very, very uh, large. Uh, and extensively illustrated book um, uh, which Ben picked up for me because he knows that I'm uh, such a, uh, a big Bowie fan. Uh, this uh, book is uh, relating to the um, exhibition in the Victorian Albert Museum in London which took place last year where they um, uh, put a lot of his um, his old stage costumes and props and and um, things like lyrics and photos on display. So a beautiful looking book, uh, full of fantastic uh, illustrations, um, as you can see. And I'm going to, uh, there's going to be some uh, reading um, this I can tell you. So uh, thank you very much for, for that, Ben. Uh, this, is, this is just simply amazing. This is an amazing um, VCLT. Uh, that's not all he gave me. Uh, this is another item which he... Um, uh, told me about quite a while ago and um, uh, been meaning to give it to me for a while. Uh, this is um, this is something that he picked up um, um, that somebody gave him for free when he was buying um, some records some time back. Um, it is a Sweet Child by Pentangle. Uh, now it's the discs only, uh, so it's minus the sleeve. Uh, now the it's the original uh, UK pressing on uh, on Transatlantic. So uh, this is a record I've been looking to to get for quite a while. So I've, I've played it. It sounds sounds perfect. Uh, the discs play perfectly. Now, if only I can pick up uh, a sleeve for this to find a proper home for these guys. Um, if anybody has uh, 
the sleeve if they if they have the, if they, if they have the record and the the discs are kind of trashed um I'd be quite happy to buy the um the sleeve from them as long as it's in good condition as long as it's you know the original laminated gatefold sleeve so um so uh, Ben thank you very very much for this fantastic VCLT um now <clears throat> Uh, in my last video, I showed you some stuff which I picked up from a um, charity shop um, vinyl window sale. Uh, I went back in the days afterwards to see if they had any stuff left over. Um, picked up something very interesting. Um, this is a box set, a tree three um lp box set uh, festival of irish folk music featuring the dubliner the bothy band the wolf tones clana danny doyle the fury brothers um it is um chime chime music uh, which i'm not familiar with uh, oh, whoops <laughs> and uh, I haven't played it yet I haven't had the opportunity to give it a spin it's it's three discs but they all look in um, uh, they all look in perfect condition um, so the other item I picked up there was um, this something rather unusual um, this is something which I I know nothing about these two performers uh, I think it is um, Dutch folk Dutch folk duo um, Marion Arts and Robbie uh, Levin uh, it is on a label called uh, Pan, uh, I don't know what this is like, I haven't listened to it, um, I just thought it looked interesting, and, and I think it appears to be autographed as well uh, by the um, by the two performers, so there we go, now um, I made some absolutely amazing charity shop um, pickups again um, over the last since my last um, uh, video but um, I'll, I'll get on to them just in a moment so um, uh, first off so um, is something which I picked up online um, on Discogs this is uh, Lonnie Smith and an album called Aphrodisia. Now Lonnie Smith is not to be uh, mixed up with um, Lonnie Liston Smith, uh, with another separate performer altogether. This is a jazz funk odyssey from 1975 and it features some extremely funky artwork as you can see here. A uh, big kind of an African theme going on there. Uh, and again, some pretty interesting stuff going on there on the back sleeve. Uh, so, uh, this features Ron Carter on bass, uh, by the way. Um, the sleeve is a little bit um, a little bit tatty, so I've got it for a fairly cheap enough price. But the the disc itself uh, plays fine, plays perfectly. There's there's no major um, uh, faults with it, and it is on uh, now a label called Groove Merchant. So this is. Um, 
you know, if you're into uh, jazz and funk, um, this this is this is I highly recommend this um, great album. Okay, um, now moving on to some more jazz, just in a moment. Um, okay, so um, I went to um, a local book and record shop where I've made some interesting discoveries in the past. Uh, this is where this is a place where I made where I picked up those um, black Sabbath vertigo swirls, which I showed a few months back. Um, there's quite a lot of jazz stuff in at the moment. Um, I made two pickups. Um, no, neither of them were, were particularly cheap. Um, they were ten euros each, but um, uh, first one here is. Keith Jarrett, uh, my song, also featuring uh, Ben, your old friend Jan, Jan Gar Garbarek. And this is on ECM on the Cinnamon ECM label. Um, I haven't had the chance to play this yet. Um, I just I've been reliably informed that this was never played, uh, and um, it does indeed look like, uh, I'd say it is very, very strongly possible that it has never been played. It does look in absolutely mint condition. Um, as long as I can uh, avoid dropping it. Um, so. And that's also the case with the next um, record which I got with it, which I got picked up also for 10 euros. And it is Paul Blay, and I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, it, it's, I think it's a Norwegian um, uh, group in HOP. So this is um, Paul Blay. I, Bought this on the recommendation of, of Ben, who, who you know has great things to say about Paul Blay. Uh, again, I haven't listened to this yet. Uh, this is supposed to be um, an absolutely amazing album. Um, again, uh, according to the um, guy in the shop, it has never been played. So. Really, really nice looking kind of shiny vinyl there. And in the same shop, um, I made another interesting pickup. Now, I managed to pick up this very cheaply. Um, this is the Go Betweens. And an album called um, Spring Hill Fair. Now, um, I, I, before this, I've never had anything by them on vinyl. Um, they were an Australian group, active in the late seventies, early eighties. Um, initially, they released um, their uh, uh, music on the Postcard label. And a Scottish label which is home to Orange Juice and Joseph K. Um, this is a um, slightly later uh, release from 1984 and it is on the um, Sire label. Uh, this is, a, I have managed to listen to this, this is a fantastic uh, like a power pop. Well, I don't know if you quite call it power pop, but um, it's from that kind of that end of kind of post punk genre. Very extremely good songwriting. Um, uh, who's this? The lead singer of this group again, uh, or the lead songwriter? I 
think was it Grant Grant McLennan? I think he is deceased. Um, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but um, yeah, I highly recommend this record, and I will be checking out more of their stuff as they're one of these groups who've kind of passed me by a bit uh, in the past. So. Uh, now, this next record is something that I've been looking for for quite a while. Um, I've been looking out for. Uh, it is the Human League's debut album, Reproduction. And this is, I think this is a second pressing, not, not a first. Uh, this came out in 1979, so this is a repress from the following year. Uh, now, um, Circus, it, some of the songs on this, um, Circus of Death, they're like they're, they're classics of the kind of early, early Human League, which is the, the reincarnation of the League, which, which I personally would be more into, you know, before the, uh, before the split, before the two girls joined. Um, it was in that kind of more um, slightly more experimental, kind of veering almost on industrial kind of um, side. Uh, so, Circus of Death, um, Empire State Human, um, The Path of Least Resistance. So, there's some great, great stuff there, and that is <laughs> that is one weird cover. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay, uh, now I'm going to move on to my charity shop, Pickups, and um, what a bunch of pickups they are. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's a particular charity shop here in town where apparently the, these all came from the same, uh, they were all part of the one donation from, from uh, the same person. Uh, some of the pickups I sold them. I've already sold them to another to a record store here in town. There were some of the uh, some of the pickups I made, which were you know, um, I bought them specifically to sell them, basically, you know. But um, I'll show you what I hung on to. Um, Uh, I picked it. All, all of these were uh, under the five euro mark, so they were, a lot of them were like you know they're really cheap for for what they would go for normally. Uh, Tangerine Dream. Uh, this is filling up a big hole in my Tangerine Dream collection. Rubicon um, from 1975. Um, on a Virgin Twins label. Uh, I haven't yet uh, had a chance to play this. Uh, it needs a clean. Uh, it's just kind of dusty. There's a lot of uh, dirt and, and stuff on it, but um, just needs a bit of a clean before I before I give it a spin. And it's a, the, the gatefold sleeve is, is really in really nice condition uh, I've seen it around quite a bit and it's like it's it's I, I haven't seen one in, in, in this good Nick I have to say uh, the spine and everything is is, is perfect um, okay so moving on now this is something uh, which when I saw it at first, I didn't take too much notice of it because uh, it kind of looks like one of those generic dance music kind of 12 inches, which you all, which you're all, which which I always see in charity shops, and I never really pay them too much notice. But then I took a closer look at this, and I spotted that it was on the Warp label. Uh, Warp, uh, the home to um, uh, Aphex Twin and Boards of Canada. So this is um, 
This is a, uh, an album from 1991, uh, Frequencies by LFO, and it is uh, an example of an early example of um, UK techno uh, LFO or a group from um, group from Leeds. Um, yeah, it turns out yeah, this is this is quite sought after actually. Um, uh, early um, early release on the Warp label. Um, it is a, an absolutely incredible album. Uh, it really, you know, in comparison to a lot of this, the kind of dance oriented music that was coming out around around that time, this this really does not sound dated at all. This is really kind of ahead of its time. Um, okay. uh, I, I quite like they, they list off their um, their their influences here on the inner sleeve um, Future um, Brian Eno Tangerine Dream Kraftwerk, Depeche Mode, Yellow Magic Orchestra uh, this album is dedicated to you so yeah, so th this is this, I really, really like this. I really enjoy this, and uh, this was a great find. Um, now staying with early '90s electronic dance music. Um, this again. Um, looked at this at first. Um, uh, kind of yeah, I thought. Mm, had a closer look at it and found yeah this is a double LP um, from the early 90s from 1992 and it's called Raving Mad as you can see um, um, a lot of these kind of dance albums Joy would kind of vaguely remember from the early 90s like um, Smarties anyone remember that you know that one that sample the Sesame Street theme uh, also features future sound of London uh, yeah so this is this is a bit of a a nostalgia trip for me because, um, like I, I wasn't huge into that kind of scene but um, I, did, I did go to a few raves in the mid 90s um, so yeah so this is um, Again, I, I would imagine that you know this being from the '90s, that probably there wouldn't have been too many copies on vinyl. So, um, and actually, well, it's, it's quite interesting the amount of um, '90s vinyl which I picked up, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is again from the same charity shop. Uh, this is. Uh, by a Japanese performer by the, who goes under the name of um, Cornelius and this is called Phantasma so this was really this is a US release a US vinyl release from 1998 uh, this is quite interesting um, uh, kind of compare this guy's work to Beck almost in a way um, I don't think I was very familiar with him before this. Um, again, it, it doesn't look the, the artwork doesn't look that exciting. Um, like it's not something that would kind of be immediately grab you. It looks very kind of lo-fi, but um, uh, this is this is good stuff. This is um, yeah, this is this is quite interesting. Yeah, so um. Cornelius um, Phantasma. Um, okay. And um, staying with the 1990s, um, this is by a band called Ultramarine, and this is called United Kingdoms. Uh, I was immediately drawn to this when I saw that um, uh, it um, uh, features an appearance by Robert Wyatt 
who, um, who contributes vocals to um, two tracks here. Um, ironically enough, the, those two tra the two tracks that feature him are probably the weakest. Uh, I much preferred the um, the instrumental stuff on this album. Um, so it's kind of this is from 1993. Uh, it's kind of um, electronic kind of trip hop, which features elements of of folk music. So it's an, an interesting one. Um, nice art, nice sleeve art as well. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, some jazz. Um, two interesting pickups from the same charity shop as, again. Uh, Charlie Parker. So Charlie Bird Parker. And um, this is. British release on a label called Saga. Um, I'll just show it you there. There we go. Uh, this is called Ornithology, and it's 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 um it, it collects some of his early um, appearances from the late nineteen. 40s and it, it actually um, Miles Davis actually features on um, on some of these um, uh, performances so some very early appearances from Miles Davis as well uh, okay and more jazz uh, this is actually on the, on the same label again um, this is Dizzy Gillespie also featuring um, Thelonious Monk and Charlie Christian and again uh, more recordings from the 40s uh, from 1941 uh, as a matter of fact uh, this comes in a kind of a I haven't listened to this yet, to this one yet um, so I'm looking forward to giving that spin Okay, um, staying with the 1990s, um, this is something which I was not at all familiar with. Uh, I spotted it, I thought, yeah, it looks interesting. Um, jellyfish, uh, belly button. Um, this is, um, I, I haven't listened to this at all, um, I'm not familiar with this. I put this up on 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 the face on YouTube Facebook page, and I got quite an interesting response um, from a lot of people. A lot of people are raving about it. Um, I, I I've yet to listen to it, but um, um, it's, it's it's actually a um, it's a limited special limited edition which comes with a bonus live EP. Um, so this this is the um, <laughs> interesting inner sleeve art, and uh, this is the album, the the LP, and this is the bonus live EP. Uh, so I, I was a bit wary of picking this up because uh, throughout the band, you know, they look a bit like. I don't know, they look a bit like a male version of, you know, that group Four Non Blondes. Um, we'll see, I'll, I'll, pl I'll play this and see what it's like and see if it lives up to um, its reputation. So, again, all charity shop finds, all for under five euros. Um, now, this this one, this find is, now this knocked me off my seat. Um, uh, talk talk um, laughing stock uh, yeah talk talk they're a band I'm kind of you mostly familiar more familiar with their 80s stuff uh, this was a bit of a latter release this is from 1991 I wasn't really all that familiar with it at all but I, I spotted it in there and I said yeah, I'll, I'll take that that looks interesting um, 
I looked it up on Discogs, and it, it, apparently it is incredibly rare. Uh, it goes for huge money. Uh, this is this is a Dutch pressing, by the way, but um, the UK pressing uh, goes is the most sought after. But this, even this one, this Dutch pressing, this goes for pretty big money. Um, uh, very very thin, flexible vinyl. Um, so whoever whoever donated all this stuff, uh, clearly, um, you know, they just, just either they weren't weren't aware of you know the fact that a lot of this stuff is, is worth quite a lot, or they didn't care, or they just wanted to get rid of it. Um, anyway, they do, they they donated it to a charity shop, um, um, to Oxfam, the Oxfam charity shop, and you know, I mean their loss was my gain so uh, I'll just finish up with the, the last item from the charity shop item um, uh, this is something you'll all recognize this is uh, the the mind bomb um, original UK pressing uh, this features um, the one and only Johnny Marr, along with um, Matt Johnson, uh, the only regular kind of member of, of the, the. Um, yeah, this is an amazing album. This is um, just, um, I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but um, yeah, this, this is fantastic. This is just a great, great album. Um, this actually comes with um, a, a poster as well. Um, a nice big full out poster. There you go. So, there we go. Um, thanks again to Ben, uh, Ben Costello, for the that amazing VCLT and uh, it just goes to show you know charity shops um, or thrift shops or goodwill shops whatever you call them I know that they have a bad reputation you I mean you know I, personally I've been going to them for years and I've picked up you know hardly anything worth talking about but this is just a this is just amazing this is um, this kind of run of um of um uh, uh of look is just unprecedented oh i i almost forgot i also picked up a cd uh, in the shop uh, this is Aphex twin um selected ambient uh works uh volume two uh i saw this in the cd section and i decided i'll grab that um Amazingly, the guy, when when I went to the counter to pay for it, the guy said, "Oh, we had that on vinyl two weeks ago, um, and I, we put it out. It, it's it's gone now. It's bought." I, I just my mouth, my my jaw dropped. Um, I couldn't believe it. Um, so, thanks very much for watching, everybody. And um, I, I hope this video isn't too long. Uh, it's over half an hour, but. Um, uh, I'll see you all again and um, uh, thanks for watching.